The story of the Blenheim begins in the mid-1930s. Around 1934, media giant Lord Rothermere, owner of the Daily Mail, wanted a light transport aircraft that could carry six people manned by a crew of two. With this in mind, he put the challenge out to the British aircraft industry to design an aircraft that was in his words, quote, the fastest commercial aeroplane in Europe, if not the world, end quote. In 1933, Bristol's chief designer, Frank Barnwell, had begun work on a small twin-engine transport aircraft that had capacity for six to eight passengers. This design, known as the Type 135, was a low-wing all-metal monoplane design and was intended to be powered by two 500-horsepower Bristol Aquila sleeve valve air-cooled radial engines. Lord Rothermere got a hold of what Bristol was working on and discussions arose. The Type 135 was further altered to ensure that it would fit the demand of Lord Rothermere, one of the biggest changes being the swapping of the power plants from the Bristol Aquila engine to the 640 horsepower Bristol Mercury 6 air-cooled radial engine. The new aircraft received the designation Type 142 and Lord Rothermere put a deposit down on the new aircraft. The Type 135 was still developed separately but ultimately never went much further. On the 12th of April 1935, the Type 142 made its maiden flight. Christened Britain's first, the aircraft immediately impressed and performance was better than anticipated. It is said that during one test it managed to hit 307 miles per hour at 14,000 feet. In 1935, the Royal Air Force was only at the very beginning of its modernisation process. The Hawker Hurricane wouldn't fly until the end of the year and the RAF's primary fighters were still of biplane design. Thus, when the Type 142 flew, it was believed to be faster than any RAF aircraft of the time, and hence interest quickly developed in the Air Ministry of the military potential of the new design. The Air Ministry requested that they could borrow the aircraft for evaluation, and this was met with a donation of the aircraft to the RAF. As a result, Britain's first was sent to Martlesham Heath in June of 1935, carrying the experimental markings of R-12 on the fuselage. It would then receive the RAS serial of K-7557. Trials must have shown promise as in July, the Air Ministry held a meeting with Bristol regarding the conversion of the type into a three-man bomber and from this, specification 2835 was developed to cover the militarised version of the Type 142. This was followed in September by an order of 150 examples straight off the drawing board. Bristol would designate the militarised version of the Type 142 as the Type 142M, and there were several key revisions to the original design. Firstly, the wings were moved up the fuselage to a mid-wing position so to accommodate the new internal bomb bay. The nose was slightly widened and had to be reconfigured to fit the bomb aimer's position. The tailplane was moved a little higher while there was a slight increase in the overall span of the tailplane and the structure of the aircraft internally was strengthened. A crew of three was chosen, pilot, navigator slash bomb aimer and gunner. The Type 142M could carry a payload of 1,000 pounds and its defensive armament would consist of a single 303 Vickers K gun in a semi-retractable dorsal turret and a single forward-firing 303 machine gun in the port wing. This light defensive armament would become a significant weak point of the Blenheim in the years to come, and although new modern monoplane fighters were coming into the RAF infantry, it was believed that the Blenheim would be able to outrun its opponents. The first Type 142M, to become known as the Blenheim 1, took to the skies for its maiden flight on the 28th of June 1936. The prototype would have two Mercury 6 S2 power plants, something that was, among a few other things, changed to the 850 horsepower Mercury 7 power plant on production kites. Another change would be the removal of the retractable tailwheel for a non-retractable tailwheel. RAF figures gave the Blenheim 1 a top speed of 279 miles per hour at 15,000 feet and a range of 1,125 miles. There was also interest in the Blenheim from overseas, with orders quickly coming in from Turkey, Finland and Yugoslavia. Finland and Yugoslavia would also negotiate a license to manufacture them in their respective countries. 
Further orders had also followed from the Air Ministry, and by the end of 1936, it is said that some 1,568 Blenheims were on order. As a result of this, additional production lines were set up at AV Row & Co Limited and Roots Security Limited. The Blenheim 1 started arriving in RAS service during March of 1937, with number 114 Squadron at Whiten being the first to be equipped. January 1938 would see the first overseas squadron equipped with the Blenheim when number 30 squadron at Habinia, Iraq converted to the type. Back in the UK, by the time the Munich crisis of 1938 had unfolded, the RAF had some 16 bomber squadrons equipped with the type. This would decrease to only two bomber squadrons in Britain at the beginning of the Second World War, as the Blenheim 4 had come into service and thus was replacing the Mark 1 in service. The Blenheim II was a one-off modified Blenheim I that never developed any further. It would be fitted with long-range fuel tanks and did have capacity to carry more bombs. But performance was hurt and as a result it didn't develop any further. The Blenheim IV was visually quite different to its predecessor. When in 1935 the Air Ministry issued specification G2435 calling for a coastal reconnaissance light bomber to replace the aging Avro Ansons in service, Bristol submitted the Type 149 Bolingbroke, which was based off the Blenheim 1. This would develop into the Blenheim 4, with the Bolingbroke name being lost on machines built in the UK. However, Blenheim 4s produced under license in Canada would keep the Bolingbroke name. Anyhow, ultimately this role for a coastal reconnaissance light bomber was filled with a Lockheed Hudson, and the Blenheim 4 would spend much of its service with RAF Bomber Command. The Blenheim 4 incorporated a few key changes over the Blenheim 1. Firstly, it boosted greater fuel capacity that enabled it to increase range to 1,460 miles from 1,135 miles of the Mark 1. This was achieved by fitting additional fuel tanks in the outer wing. Having more fuel added weight and thus if fully loaded, the Blenheim 4 couldn't land. Thus, if you lost an engine on takeoff, it would be too heavy to land. As a result, an emergency jettison system was implemented for such a scenario. Next, the nose of the aircraft was extended by some 3 feet to provide additional room for the Navigator bomb aimer. The first design of the Mark IV had the nose in the same style as the Mark I, with it just being extended forward by 3 feet. However, upon testing, pilots found that they were too far away from the window, and as a result there was glare and distortion issues. The solution to this was to extend the nose slightly further, but move the pilot windows to be just in front of him and lower the roof of the navigator's compartment, creating a stepped look. This was found to cause visibility issues on takeoff and landing. So the starboard side of the navigator's compartment was lowered and thus the distinctive look of the Blenheim 4 was created. To begin with, defensive armament was the same as the Blenheim 1 and bomb load was the same. Top speed was slightly slower than the Blenheim 1, although the engines were upgraded to the Mercury 15. A Blenheim 1 was converted to the new standard to act as the prototype for the Blenheim 4, and it first flew on the 24th of September 1937. This was followed with an initial order of 134 against Air Ministry Specification 1136, and production for the Blenheim 4 would mainly be undertaken by Avro and Root Security. There was an urgency to get the Blenheim 4 into service, and as a result, the first lot of aircraft were missing the outer wing fuel tanks, these being retrofitted later once in service. A few also had the Mercury 8 engines rather than the Mercury 15 that were intended for the Mark IV. Still though, with deliveries beginning in 1939, by the time war was declared on Germany, the RAF had taken on charge 168 Blenheim 4s, equipped with 10 squadrons. Very beginning of the Second World War, the Blenheim would be involved in combat. On the 3rd of September 1939, minutes after Britain declared war on Germany, a lone Blenheim 4 of number 139 squadron was tasked with a reconnaissance mission over Wilhelmshaven to monitor the German Navy, marking the RAF's first sortie of the war. This was followed the next day with the first combat mission of the war, when 15 Blenheims were sent out to attack these same ships around Wilhelmshaven. Throughout September 1939, the Blenheim was mainly used as a reconnaissance aircraft and in one flight flew over Berlin, 
perhaps making it the first RAF aircraft to do so. As the war geared up, Blenheims were moved to France. Numbers 114 and 139 squadrons were deployed to form part of the advanced air strike force in France, while Blenheim squadrons numbers 18, 53, 57 and 59 squadrons formed part of the air component of the British Expeditionary Force. As the phony war raged on throughout 1939 and 1940, the Blenheims were mainly constricted to reconnaissance work. However, this all changed in May of 1940 when Germany began their invasion of France and the Low Countries. Quickly, the Blenheim alongside the ferry battle were thrusted into the middle of the action, mainly undertaking daylight bombing raids. Blenheim's were number two group based in England would also be utilised. The Blenheim did not fare well during combat in France and faced against the modern BF 109s of the German Luftwaffe, losses quickly tallied up. One raid of the 14th of May 1940 saw only three of the eight Blenheims sent come back, while May 12th had seen some 20 Blenheims shot down throughout the day. As the Allies retreated back to Dunkirk and then back to Britain, the Blenheim squadrons, all of which had suffered significantly, were withdrawn back to Britain. The Battle of France had revealed that the Blenheim lacked adequate defensive armament and that its once famed speed would not save it against modern enemy fighters. As a result, testing began on upgrading the Blenheim Falls armament and after many trials, a twin gun dorsal turret was finalised. Another addition would be a single machine gun in a remotely controlled turret under the chin of the aircraft. The Blenheim would continue to significantly be used during the Battle of Britain. Here they were mainly utilised to undertake low-level raids against strategic targets in occupied France as well as French coastal ports, targeting barges and materials that could be utilised in the German plan Operation Sea Lion. However, these raids were unescorted daylight raids and once again the Blenheim squadron suffered heavily. In one such attack on the 13th of August by No. 82 Squadron against Old Ball Airfield in Denmark saw all 11 Blenheims failing to return. Out of the 33 men sent on the mission, only 13 would survive the war as POWs. The Blenheim did though manage to be the first British aircraft to sink a German U-boat unaided when on the 11th of March 1940, U-31 was sunk by the bombs from a No. 82 Squadron Blenheim. In the late 1930s, the long range of the Blenheim led it to be made into a long range escort fighter. Appearing as the Mark 1F and the Mark 4F respectively, these versions of the Blenheim had the addition of four 33 machine guns located in a gun pack fitted to the bomb bay. By the time of the Second World War, seven home based fighter squadrons had been converted to Blenheim 1F fighters. However, in the fighting that was to come, it soon proved to be inadequate as a day fighter. But as a night fighter, the Blenheim would prove to be somewhat successful. Being bigger than most fighters, the Blenheim to begin with was the only fighter able to carry the bulky airborne radar equipment and this would be put to use during the German night bombing campaign of Britain. On the night of the 2nd 3rd of July 1940, a Blenheim 1F of the Fighter Interception Unit at Ford downed a Dornier DO-17 marking the first successful kill of an aircraft using airborne radar equipment. And although they were somewhat successful, they did lack speed to be able to catch the German bombers, and as a result, they were soon replaced by improved aircraft in the form of the Bristol Bowfighter. As the war slowly turned back in the Allies' favour, beginning in early 1941, the Blenheim would be utilised as part of circus operations over the continent as Britain started to hit back. This would involve medium bomber formations being sent over to attack targets in France with a heavy fighter escort. It was hoped that the bomber formations would bring the Luftwaffe fighters up and thus allow the British fighters to engage. Then in April 1941, Blenheims were used to try and close the Dover Strait from German shipping. This operation would last until 1942, however increased flak ships in convoys as well as effective Luftwaffe fighter cover resulted in significant casualties to Blenheim crews. Australian Blenheim pilot, leader of No. 105 Squadron RAF, Wing Commander Huey Edwards, was awarded the Victoria Cross, leading a raid of 12 Blenheims against Brenham in 1941. In May 1942, the first 1,000 bomber raids took place, with which the Blenheim was a part of. 
However, by now the Blenheim was starting to be retired from frontline service, and a few months later, on the 17th, 18th of August 1942, it is believed the Blenheim flew its last bomber command sortie. So that, more or less, brings an end to the history of the Blenheim within the UK and with Bomber Command. However, both the Blenheim 1 and 4 had eventful careers outside the UK. When World War II erupted, the Blenheim was already operating in Egypt, Aden, Iraq, India and Singapore. Most of these were still flying the bomber version of the Mark 1, yet to re-equip to the Mark 4. When Italy declared war on Britain on the 10th of June 1940, Blenheim 1s from numbers 45, 55 and 113 squadron based in Egypt was sent straight off to bomb the Italian airfield at Ald Adem. The Blenheims would be utilised quite extensively throughout the early part of the war in Northern Africa. As Greece came under attack from the Italians and then the Germans, a series of squadrons equipped with a mixture of Mark 1 fighters and bombers and a handful of Mark 4 Blenheims were sent across to help in the defence of Greece. Ultimately, five squadrons, numbers 11, 30, 84, 113 and 211 squadron were sent across and while they saw some success against Italian forces, when the Germans began their invasion during April 1941, losses very quickly started to mount. Once again, the Blenheim proved to be very vulnerable to BF-109 fighters. On April 13th, No. 211 Squadron sent six Blenheims on a bombing mission where they intercepted by BF-109Es, with the result being all six planes shot down. As the Germans continued their advance and the British fell back to the island of Crete, the remains of the Blenheim squadrons were withdrawn back to Egypt. No. 30 Squadron did stay on Crete to defend it, where it would be completely destroyed. It should be noted that during this campaign, a handful of Blenheims also fought with the Royal Hellenic Air Force. By the beginning of 1941, the Blenheim 4 had begun arriving in Northern Africa in increasing numbers and replacing the Blenheim 1 in service. Here they would play an important role in supporting the troops of the British 8th Army. Detachments were also sent to the island of Malta to attempt to attack Axis shipping. This proved to be effective, although casualties were often quite high. The Blenheim 4 would continue in frontline service in Northern Africa into the early part of 1942. However, by that time, most had been either withdrawn or moved to the Far East following Japan's entry into the war. In the Far East, the Blenheim 1 and 4 would see combat against the Japanese following their entry into the war in December 1941. Here they would be sent into the fray in desperate attempts to stem the Japanese advancements throughout Asia, but once again Blenheim squadrons would suffer. Blenheim pilot squadron leader Arthur Scarf of No. 62 Squadron would be posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross for his efforts in attacking a Japanese airfield alone following his squadron's destruction on the ground. He would be mortally wounded during the raid, but managed to bring his Blenheim and crew back to Allied territory. The final variant of the Blenheim was the Blenheim 5. This was initially known as the Bisley 1 and was a ground support variant of the Blenheim 4. In May 1940, the Air Ministry issued specification type B640, looking for a bomber aircraft to support the British Army with guns and bombs. Bristol submitted the Type 146CS, which was based on the Blenheim 4. It had the addition of 600 pounds of armour protection, had a solid nose capable of carrying some 433 machine guns, and the engines were to be a low altitude rated version of the Mercury 16. Two prototypes were ordered under the designation of the Bisley 1. However, following the evacuation of Dunkirk, the need for a ground support aircraft was not needed. As a result, one of the prototypes had its nose redesigned so that part of it would be glazed, providing a cramped compartment for a bomb aimer. It's not exactly clear, but from what I can make out from my research is that all Blenheim 5s that were produced had the bomb aimer's position. The hard-nosed version would fly first on the 24th of February 1941, shortly followed by the bomber version. The bomber version would become known as the Type 160. Other changes with the Blenheim 5 included a strengthened undercarriage and the implementation of an improved Bristol BX dorsal turret that carried two Browning machine guns. There were also two rear wood firing guns placed in a turret under the nose. All up weight increased and as a result the performance of the Mark V also suffered. 
Production of the Blenheim 5 began in October 1941, and all 942 would be built by Root Security, with the final one coming off the production line in June of 1943. The Blenheim 5 would see service in North Africa, with four squadrons converting onto the type. However, it would still suffer much like its predecessors, being vulnerable to fighter attacks. In one sortie on the 17th of November 1942, 12 aircraft were intercepted by BF-109s with all being shot down. Wing Commander Hugh Malcolm, who had led the mission, was later posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross. Still, the Blenheim 5 would stay active in supporting the Allied troops on the ground in the desert until the Axis surrendered in 1943. It would remain in service in the theatre until mid-1944, and in the UK, some were kept active with operational training units until around July 1945. The Blenheim 5 were also operated by three French, Greek and South African squadrons. The Blenheim 5 would also see service in the Far East during the war. By 1944, the Blenheim was being retired from RAS service. By then, it had had a long and hard career, and never lived up to the expectations and reputation it had built before the war, primarily due to the quick and fast rate of development air combat went under during the same period. Finland would produce them under license, seeing action against the Russians during the Winter War, while they were also produced under license in Yugoslavia, briefly seeing service against the Germans during their invasion of Yugoslavia. In Canada, some 676 Blenheim 4s were produced by Fairchild Aircraft as the bowling broke. Turkey would be another customer of the Blenheim design, and a handful were given to Portugal and Romania. At the end of production, nearly some 5,500 had been produced in the UK. Today, there is only a handful of Blenheims left, and only one airworthy example, this being based in the UK. Originally a Blenheim 4, this aircraft following a crash landing was rebuilt to a Mark 1 specification. Elsewhere, there are a handful of Bolingbrokes on display or under restoration in Canada and the UK, while the Aviation Museum of Central Finland displays a Blenheim 4. In Greece, the Hellenic Air Force Museum has the wreck of a Mark 4F that was lifted from the seabed. The Blenheim's history provides a good insight into the rapid development of technology and tactics that took place during the period between 1935 to 1940.